everybody. I hope everyone is having a great day today. We are going to continue the conversation that we started yesterday all about automations. I'm going to refresh your memory on uh, the different types of automations that you should and could be doing inside of your travel business. And we're going to actually go over some of the automations that are available to you and some considerations that you may want to take when it comes to operating your travel business. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. If you, but before I start, let me just uh, do a quick invitation. If you are not already a part of our travel boss group so that you can catch the replays and any references that we use, I usually provide checklists or guides as a reference for our calls that you can join us inside of a travel boss community. And the way to do that is to go to let me include that in the comments. If you go to HTTP or online travel boss.com forward slash member, that will take you straight to our portal where we post our replays and you can also get access to any of the downloads that I create for these trainings. All right. So with that, I'm actually going to present my screen and I'm going to remind you of what we did yesterday. So let me share that really quick. All right. So yesterday I went over a common list of tasks that you can automate in your travel business based on the repetitiveness of those tasks. And so what I want to do is actually we yesterday. So if you missed yesterday, you can check out my YouTube channel and take a look at, I taught you how to create a task automation. So First, always when designing your workflows or getting ready to implement a workflow, you want to sit down with a piece of paper and map out what you want to do. What are the goals of what your workflow are and map it out on paper. And so we did a simple test yesterday and we walked through how to create a task automation. So you let's say you wanted a reminder to go out to yourself or to your staff members to let them know that maybe a new travel request has been approved. And so we set that up. So check out that video that's going to be up on the right. If you're watching in YouTube, I believe it's on the right hand side uh, where the video will be. But today what I want to do is actually focus on client follow ups because the money is in the follow up. And so making sure that you have a really strong follow up game when it comes to email communication and even text message communication, even though the FCC has made it a little bit difficult for you, you can't just uh, you know start mass texting like you used to you do have to go through some sort of application process. We do help you do that inside of Travel Pro Suite. However, Client follow-up is the key to ensuring that your message happens. And so what I want to do is I want to show you quickly some follow-ups that are already available. And we're going to actually, for the remainder of the time, build out a follow-up from scratch and let you see kind of what the components are. I don't think I could do this enough because sometimes this can be a little bit complex for people to understand uh, the, all the different factors that go into an automation. So we're going to go over all of those today. All right. I'm going to actually share with you our demo. And so if you are a travel pro suite user and you are either on our basic or our premier level, you have access to automations. And so the automations is where you can define the workflow. And so out of the box, when you get your account, you have access to the done for you workflows that I've designed for travel advisors. So these are split into the different major areas of your travel business, the request area. If you do group trips, that's under the presentation payments, and client booking. What I'm going to do is actually kind of show you in the client booking workflow what we do. And one of the most common workflows that travel advisors have is the communication post the confirmation. So once someone has confirmed their booking or you've confirmed their booking, you've gotten the supplier confirmation numbers and you sent out that email, we already have out of the box, so to speak, confirmation emails that go out at different intervals. So we do a confirmation. We do a confirmation at the time that you update the confirmation field. Then we also do a 90 day check-in, a 30 day check-in, seven days, one day, 
and the day of and the day after. And so those are already done for you. And I'm just going to open up whichever one I can see first. I think uh, let's go and open up the 90 day. You do not have to do anything with these done for you automations. They're already designed for you. But some of the things I'm going to walk you through sort of the logic behind it, because these are things that if you understand how they're built, there may be specific custom use cases that you have that you may want to build your own automation with. So the first thing is, is that our trigger here is built on the 90 days of the trip date. So when 90 days before the trip date, we fire off this automation and then based on different different actions we are then going to update a contact tag we're going to send out an email we're going to um and in that email we're asking for information from the client we're going to wait to see if the client actually did what we said right because we have called the action in our email and so we will wait a week if they haven't responded we're going to send them another reminder and this is the kind of thing that you may want to have in your automations as well remember people are very busy they get sidetracked maybe they open it and they don't start it or whatever and they don't get back to you so what you want to build, particularly when you are doing follow up, is a repetitiveness to the reminder. You don't want to just send one reminder, just like we don't just send one promotion. We send multiple promotions. We send multiple reminders. Typically, I design our workflows to be a three reminder series. And then I'm going to reach out to the travel advisor and say, hey, you need to do something. Maybe you need to reach out to the client. And that may be something that you want to think about as well when you're designing your own workflows is how many reminders do you want to send out to the person? And there really isn't any rule of thumb. I pick three because I'm thinking, OK, if I give you the initial email and then I wait a week and then I wait three days and you still haven't done the action, you're either not interested or I need to do something differently, right? Because doing the same thing over and over again doesn't necessarily get you a good result. So that's why we do three. And then on the fourth one, we're sending out something that's escalated, which is we'll probably pick up the phone and call the person or maybe we send a text. Whatever you decide, just decide out that flow. And so in our 90 day workflow, what we do is we wait seven days, then we send out the reminder number two. We're checking again. If they haven't done the action, then we're waiting another seven days and then sending out another email. This is 90 days. And what we're looking for in the 90 day check is an actual passport information that we have the passport information on file. Excuse me, if we don't have it on file, we're sending out the reminders because again, we want to be able to cover our clients by having that information on file. So in the event that they're out of the country, we have it. We can um, give that information to them. Who, who has their passport information memorized, right? And so what we're doing again is we're sending out the reminders. Um, what I do also is like I mentioned on the third try, if that information hasn't been provided, we then do an internal notification. So when we build this scratch workflow, I'm going to show you what an internal notification is and something that you may want to implement in the workflows that you design yourself. All right. So pretty much this is the workflow. It's just a series of different emails that are sent to remind as reminders to let the client know that we are still waiting for their information. We do that at the 90 day mark. We do it at the 30 day mark. And then at the seven and the one day mark, we're actually sending out their itinerary. And so let's go back and let's create a workflow from scratch. And then let's talk about these different factors that you need to consider when building out your workflows. All right, we're going to actually I'm going to show you what select a recipe means, because we have some already built in workflows that you can uh, start with. So it's not that you're starting from scratch. I actually like to start from scratch because even though they're handy, these recipes are handy. Oftentimes you don't know what the person was thinking when they when they were built. So you got to check every box. So I'd rather just build it myself so that I know exactly how it's built. So, but if you ever do want to take a look at this for our industry, the things that would be um, important or 
of interest to you. Maybe I like this one that is really the, there's a birthday reminder. We haven't built a done for you birthday reminder as of yet, but there's this recipe for the birthday template. And so I'm going to actually use this as I, I'm going to actually do a blank one, but I'm going to let you guys do this. This one is a birthday template. I may actually do a training that's uh, specific on how to build this one out. And this one is another one that I think is really handy, which is the Facebook Messenger. And we also have an Instagram message. There's a recipe for a Facebook message and a, a Google My Business message. And then there's also a Instagram message because these are all new um, functionality that we have in our system. I don't see the Instagram. Oh, there it is right there. Um, Instagram comments. And then there's a Facebook comment and then there's a Facebook messenger. So what I love about all of these is, is that if somebody comments on a business post that you have, you can set up an automation or workflow to automatically respond to that. The other scenario is if somebody sends you a message in your messenger, you can set up automation for that. And, you know, what I'm going to do is because we also have some AI integration that you can do, which is really slick. Um, and that's some advanced stuff. But if you're interested in that, we'll probably do that in the next couple of weeks where we actually create a workflow and let you see how it looks with uh, utilizing AI. But for the time being, again, I just want to level set and make sure that everybody's starting from the same point is that you understand the components of a workflow and what you can build out because literally the sky is the limit. We're going to create one from scratch. Yesterday, as a reminder, we created a workflow and we created tasks. The objective of that workflow was to create tasks. The objective of this workflow is going to be just to do an email, maybe an internal email to you and a text message to the client when they fill out a form. So let's say that. So let's say you've got an opt-in that you've created a stranger offer or some amazing checklist or a guide or something, and you want to build out that workflow. The first thing I always say when you're building out a workflow, start from the top and work your way down. First thing you want to do at the top is give it a name. What's the purpose of your workflow? So I'm going to say that this is a welcome, welcome series, and I usually put the product. So let's say it's to my travel guide. And the first thing that we want to do is what's going to trigger that. So like how does somebody, it triggers just simply, how does somebody get into the workflow? And in this situation, the trigger would be, they get into the workflow by submitting a form. So you can, we have a form, we have form, we also have surveys. So if you guys are doing surveys, you can also do that. So you'll, if you wanna do a form submitted or you could do a survey submitted. So either two of those things would be really valid um, entry points for somebody to join a workflow. So I'm going to do form because typically when I do a opt-in, I'm going to have them fill out a simple form that has three elements, name, first name, email, and phone number. And with the new SMS rule, I'm probably going to take phone number off and it's just going to be name and email address. So here you would select form and then on the form, you're going to select what the name of the form is. And so this form is in here, I am just going to select this opt-in funnel just for the sake of this. And then you save the trigger. Again, I like to name everything so that I can know what it is that I'm doing. So I'm going to just say name equals the form name equals travel guide. And then I'm going to save that trigger. And this is going to be the entry point. So again, the plan would be to send an email. If I'm doing a guide, it's going to be five emails, right? It's going to be five, seven emails, maybe even 30 emails, right? So the objective is to make sure that you design the, the workflow on paper. What is the action? Because after you define the trigger, it's the action that's next. What do you want to do? So in this scenario, what I want to do is I want to send an email. So I'm just going to type an email and I can send an email. And here, what's going to happen is the email builder is going to show up right here on the right hand side. I'm going to walk you through what each of these fields mean. The action name is the name. So again, this is going to be email number one in my series. And I like to, like I said, I like to name everything so I can welcome travel guide and it would be whatever the travel guide name is. 
from you can leave this blank or you can set it i typically leave it blank because we've already set up our from and to in our email uh, settings but if you would like to uh, make this firm and you can put your name here i want to also point you to what these features are right here this little tag when you click on this this allows you to pull in the fields that are specific to um, the contact record or to the event associated with the contact. So the contact, when you click this little, this will be all the fields that you could pull in and put here. For this situation, the from is going to be your name, or we also have a custom field, which is called um, account. So I'm going to go back and that's going to be account. And if you don't want to put your name all the time, you can just put the account owner's name, the owner, which would be you. You can select first name and last name if you want. Typically, I just, like I said, typically I leave this blank because we've already got the settings to bring it in. Make sure that the email address, if you do put an email address, that the email address is the same domain that we have set up in your account. So no at Gmail, no at Yahoo, no at MSN. It should be your URL um, that is already set up in your account. So whatever your travel business name is, .com, .net, .org, whatever you've got, that should be the where the from email should be. The subject, you want to give your email a subject. And so, you know, I'm just going to call this test welcome email number one. And then here, what you can do is if you've got an email that is pretty regular, that you send this email out pretty consistently, you can create yourself a template and then pull in that template instead of building out the email here. So we have upwards of, I want to say we have over 50 email templates already. I, I don't remember the number, but we have a lot of email templates already available based on the workflow action. So you can absolutely utilize any one of those email templates, but for something like this, and you can see the email templates are gonna be here in terms of what's available. But for this, we don't, this is just a, this is just a one-time um, example. So I don't have a template here. And then you can start to build out your email. So this whole idea of these custom fields or values that you can use even exist in your email builder. And so that, value when you click this little tag it's going to build in bring in all of the information that you can use to personalize your email so the, f the first thing that we want to do is personalize the salutation right so i want to say hi first name so contact dot first underscore name is going to bring in that contact name and then you're going to write the body of your email like i always say i typically do not write and build at the same time. I usually will build it out. I will build it out on paper. Then I'll get all of my email. Me and ChatGPT will be best friends. I'll build out all the content and then I cut and paste it here because again, something could happen. You, I mean, and I, and I, I'm not an Apple user, but I've heard like you can move a mouse somewhere and your whole screen go away. So you want to make sure that you already have your content. Don't do it from scratch. Take it from Take it from me and lessons learned there. I have lost so much work trying to build it as I go. And then uh, for some reason, the screen, the computer freezes up, something happens. So always write out your content um, and copy and paste it into this uh, messenger. I also like to use templates that way too, because it's an aggregate build. I build out all the templates and I just attach them here and then I'm done. So here, and then you can do cheers, you know, whatever your ending is, but mine is always cheers Sunday. And then I'm going to save that. So again, the content that you want or whatever the messages you want, you'll just click save action. And that's all you need to do. Now, what I want to do is I also want to send a message to myself so that I know that this person may be downloaded. Maybe I also want to send, I want to add a note to their record to let me know if I ever go into the contact record that they already have my guide. And so let's do the note first, because I really like this and we're actually implementing this pretty much in all of our workflows is we add a note to the contact record and you can add this note 
on, you know, you can add a note after every action. So that what I like to do is I actually like to do a right now, which is a date, date and time type of thing. I don't really care so much about the time, but I'm going to put the date and then I'm going to put, you know, downloaded, downloaded travel guide. So when I look at the record, when I go into the contact record, I can actually see that they downloaded this guide on this date and I don't have to go and search and try and find it. It's going to be a note that's attached here. So here is date of download here. And then now I'm going to add an internal note, a message that comes to me. So I'm going to do, it's called an internal notification, send internal notification. And that's internal, meaning internal to your company. So you can do your staff, the person who's assigned to all of that can already be established. So here I'm going to do an SMS message. Like I want it, like I want to know like right away. <laughs> so here I'm going to do an SMS message. And then again, you can create an SMS template. I don't have one. And so I'm just going to say, you know, um, new uh, clients, and I'm going to put their name, contact, full name, downloaded. Travel guide. Do a happy dance. And there you go. And that's it. So this is going to send, and I don't think my demo account actually has text messaging set up. I should have done this in my um, live account. But here, now I've got this internal notification. I didn't um, name it. And I do make a note of that internal notification. Send SMS to assigned here. Now, I want to talk to you guys about this whole concept of a sign. I'm going to save this because I always just like to save. I'm pretty notorious about saving. Is you may want to also make sure that as people are coming into your workflow, that it's automatically getting assigned to somebody. So in this case, I'm going to assign it to myself. Um, and you may want to assign new contacts to yourself so that when you want to, if you want to send notifications, those notifications will go out to yourself or to anyone else on your staff. So um, internal notification assigned to Sunday. I'm just going to put SDG here. And then my automation is done. So you have the ability to do so many more actions, right? I mean, I could probably do a training for hours on the different types of um, actions that you can do. But right now, this is going to send immediately when somebody downloads that guide, it's going to send them an email and also send you a text message. Now, I'm going to wait because I do a five email series. I'm going to wait. And let's say I want to wait two days. I'm going to do a time delay and I'm going to do two days. And then I'm going to send another email. So I'm going to put two D here. And what's going to happen is the person's going to come into the automation. They're going to wait two days and then you can do another action. So here you can um, send another email. And you can call that email number two. But what I like to, and then you'd set it up the same way. But what I like to do is if I'm building the emails here, instead of like doing the whole thing over, we have what's called a copy action. So you can just click on these three dots and then you can click copy and then copy this action, copy it where you want it. So I want to copy that same email that I'm going to edit it. This just saves me the time from having to actually build all of the email set up the same way. So I like to just copy actions down. So here I'm going to change this and I'm going to call this email number two. And then here I'm going to call this test email number two. And obviously this would have specific content for that email. And you notice now here, I'm going to change the subject. So typically when I copy, you need to change three things. You need to change the action name, the subject, and then the content inside of the email. Then you click save. Always save your work as you go. So you don't learn a hard lesson, but you save your work. And then after you save your work, before you want to, after you're done, so you're done, 
Like, so you can just continue this as long as you, as many emails as you have. Typically we do five. So I would continue this until all five emails were set up and then I would be done. But there's this one little additional feature that I want to um, express to you all that you can do to get somebody to come out of the automation. So have you ever been, um, you know, in some, maybe you opted in and really the goal of this guide, right? Because when you're building an email, there should be a goal, right? There should be a call to action. What is that? Is that to book an appointment? Is that to buy your trip? What is the goal? of the guide it's not just for them to get the guide right there's more <laughs> there's more to that than this so whatever the goal is what you can do is establish that goal in your email series and then based on when the goal is achieved then the person will stop receiving your emails i absolutely recommend that you do this because it doesn't make sense if they've already booked the appointment that they keep getting email three, four, five, six, and seven, right? You want to end them and move them out of the series and end it. So the way to do that is to establish a goal for your email series. And so this goal, we're going to call that a goal event. And then there's different factors that you can consider when building out your goal. But the factors that really that we do are tags is you can you can do received um, an email event that means like if they opened or um, clicked on it and these are good when you're doing reactivation emails however the one that i would think for an email series like this would be a contact and so here i'm going to i know we have this uh download test guide as a so one not not download sorry let's say purchased or booked an appointment let's say we want when the person has booked a discovery call. So we have a tag called discovery call. I don't know how to spell. Booked the discovery call. So once that tag has occurred and somebody has booked a discovery call, a new tag is going to enter on that record and then they're going to stop getting these emails because ultimately the email content is going to say, book a call, book a call. I want you to book a call. So once they booked a call, I don't need them to get the rest of my emails. So that's what this goal will do. And so we're going to call this goal equals booked discovery call. And then we're going to save this. And this action here is end the workflow. This means it once this event happens, the person will come to the bottom of the workflow and it will end for them and they won't continue getting. So no matter where they are in the workflow, if they book a discovery call, you know, after email one, they won't get email two, three, four, and five. They'll just get that first email and then they'll immediately be moved to the bottom of the workflow. So I always want you to be thinking about when you're building out your workflows, what is the purpose? Because we have a purpose for everything that we do. What is the purpose of your particular um, workflow, your automation? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? And so based on that, Based on what you're trying to accomplish, make sure that you set a goal accordingly. All right. Do not forget to hit publish and then save and then you want to test. And so the thing that you can do to test is you can simply just add yourself or you could fill out your form or do the event in test mode for whatever it is that you're doing so that you're, you can test out your workflow. Listen, I hope that this is helpful. Automation can really be um, your best friend. It could um, really help you double the interaction that you have with your clients. It could um, improve your responses. It can improve your purchases. Automations really can be your best friend. And so knowing how to set them up is the key. And if you have any questions, you can join us inside of our office hours that are happening right now. You can join us inside at uh, sundaygardener.com and join us in the Zoom room. And then if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and we will see you on the next training. Talk to you soon. If you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. 
And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. The time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, we're starting right now. Go to sundaygardener.com.